Hello and welcome friends. Today we are doing uh, the Python lesson 3.3 uh, and we're doing a lab for that which is called War. War is um, a card game. If you haven't played it, you basically just put two random cards into the middle and whoever has the card that wins gets to keep both cards. It's a rather simple game and this is our implementation in Python. So um, another thing with this is that it is rather long so I'm not going to be going over how I created it. I'm just going to kind of be detailing out the different sections of it so you can get a good idea of how the program works and i'll definitely give you a good view at the most important parts but to start with the first thing that we're going to do um, is we wanted three specific functions that the uh, lab defined for us one is called player's turn one is called compare scores and also have another one that is for shuffling cards so here um, i import random and then my function for player turn simply takes a player's name and the deck and you can see right here it uses deck.pop to get the uh, latest card out of that deck and then it also uh, stores that into a drawn card variable that i return right here at the very end right very simple stuff um, and i also just print you know who pulled what basically so if i put in you know player one's name it'll say player one drew a particular card right uh, my shuffle deck uh, function is uh, just basically you know creating a variable for a basic deck. This is just a list uh, that just creates uh, a bunch of random numbers for me, right? So it's just random numbers, two through 15, which gives me uh, 52 cards, because I'm doing that four times. And then I'm using the shuffle function, I'm putting basic deck in it, and that shuffle function goes through, and it sorts it randomly for me. Very useful, and then I return the basic deck. And then finally, my last function before we get into the main part of the code is compare scores. So compare scores will just take two cards and you can see it's just a simple if else and uh, else if statement. So if, you know, card one is equal to card two, I return zero. And then, of course, if card one is greater than card two, I return one. And then the only other, uh, you know, real condition that I have left is that card two is greater. And in that case, I return two. All right. This is all. Uh, great stuff so far, but then we want to go into the actual uh, main function itself. So this main function, we have, uh, we just start off by getting the input of both players. So we have P1 and P2's name stored. Uh, we also get the scores and P1 and P2's deck. Um, and of course, the game deck is equal to shuffle deck. And while that game deck is still there, so this part's really important. When we're doing this while game deck, we're saying while game deck is still full. Because game deck, if you remember from my shuffle deck function, which I can show you right here, shuffle deck um, is a, a list, right? And this while loop is, is very simple. And it's almost deceivingly simple because it just says, hey, while game deck, right? What does that mean? Well, while game deck just means while the game deck is still full, while that variable still has, uh, you know, elements inside the list. So when I go through that, uh, we use our player turn function. So you can see here, I'm saying P1 card because we're returning an integer and that's what I'm storing is equal to player turn P1 name in game deck. So I'm passing in the game deck, I'm grabbing a random card out of that deck and then I'm returning it to the user. Uh, very straightforward stuff. I'm doing that for both of them and then I'm using compare integer to uh, or comp int to do compare scores. So compare scores basically just takes in both those cards and tells me which one has the high card. Um, now down here is where I'm actually comparing the two people to see who won, right? So if compare integer is one, it means that player one card is greater. If uh, comp integer equals two, it means that player, player two card is of course greater. Uh, the code here um, is all pretty much similar on both sides. So basically I you know, name who has the high card, then I append uh, both cards to their deck. Then I say you know, their score is the, the size of their deck. So that's a very important part. It's a very easy way to look at their score, right? And in war, your score is simply the number of cards in your deck. So in this case, we can see that the player one score is equal, equal to len p1 deck and p1 deck in this case is an integer that I created, or I'm sorry, a list that I created earlier. So if I move down, you can see compare integer for two for the second player winning is basically the same thing. Um, and I'm just saying, hey, you know, this case player two has the high card. now. Um, I would challenge you to make these uh, two compare integer, you know, these particular portions into a function. Uh, I didn't just for simple reasons, I was just writing it, uh, you know, it kind of differed too much for me and I didn't want to spend as much time on it, uh, but it certainly is a great case for using a function, right? 
all these right here are the same thing just for a different player. So why not pass all those into a function and have that basically do all this work for you? Instead of having to rewrite this code four times, as you'll see in a second, you can only, you know, you would only have to rewrite it once and just have variables in there to take in the values of the stuff you're putting into it. But that is, uh, of course, a project for another time. The last part of this is what happens if the compare integer is equal to zero. So you'll remember, and I'll go up to it real quick. The compare integer is when both cards are equal, right? So in the game of war, what you're gonna be doing when those two are equal is you're going to be having a, that's that's when you have the actual war, I guess, of the, the war game. And you are basically drawing cards and comparing them until you have someone who wins, right? The way I did that is that I wanted to print I wanted to let the user know war was going on. I said the war pool was equal to the two cards we've already had, right? So the user is going to get that war pool at the very end, but I'm just going to build it as we go. And then I'm going to use another while loop. Now, uh, this might, you know, be not a little bit confusing, but you might not really have a good idea of loops because I don't think we've really gotten to loops too, too much in Python yet. But uh, I have a con compare integer is equal to zero. Now I'm saying while compare integer is equal to zero. So right now this is true and it's gonna go into this loop. So I have both players draw new cards. So I can see uh, I have P1 card and P2 card being reassigned using player turn, my function. Uh, then I append to the war pool both cards. So I say war pool is now equal to both cards that I have. And I use my compare scores once again. Now this is the point where it has to loop, right? So my compare integers goes in and gets me a new value, right? So if two people draw the same card again, it's gonna skip this if statement right here, it's gonna skip this if statement right here, and it's gonna continue with this while loop once again. So if they go in there with two cards that are equal and they get two more equal cards, this will just continue until that breaks. Now at that point though, if one of them does get a, a higher value card, then we are going into uh, one of these if statements and compare integer is no longer equal to zero up here. So in that case, my while loop can actually break and it'll just continue my greater while loop for the deck right here. And again, as you can see, uh, like I said before, this is a great area where you could use kind of a function uh, instead of what I did where I just wrote it out. Um, that would be a great bonus thing I would encourage you to do. Um, but you can see right here, it's basically the same thing except instead of giving the P1 deck uh, a pending war, you know, just one card, I'm actually extending it to the war pool, and that'll allow me to extend it to all its elements, where if I appended it, it would just give it one item in the list. So uh, that is Lesson 3.3 War. Let's go ahead and see how it runs. So if I go, I click Lesson 3.3 War. You can see it's going to ask me for my player's names. I'm going to name player one Mike, and player two will be Priscilla. And it goes through, it's very fast, uh, you know, just because obviously the computer's running it, so we didn't exactly see it execute, but I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up to the top. So if I scroll all the way up, you can see Mike draws a three card, Priscilla draws 14 in the very first turn. Priscilla has the high card and she gets two points. So she gets both cards. She Her number of points is just the number of cards she has and that's what she gets. Uh, then we go to the same, the next turn, Mike gets eight, Priscilla gets nine. Uh, Priscilla has the high card. She gets four points now. Mike still has zero. Now, if we go through, what we want to look at is one of the war cases, right? So we want to make sure our code's running, and we want to make sure that someone got war, war, uh, you know, acts properly as we expect it to. So here, you can see Mike and Priscilla both draw card 10. That means we go into war, and that is triggering correctly because I have my print statement in right there. Then you can see that Mike draws card two, Priscilla draws card three, and in that case, she has the high card and she goes from having six up here because she continuously drew high cards to having 10 cards. So she grabbed, she went from six, she grabbed all four cards right here and she now has 10, which means that we are acting pretty uh, as expected. And so if I go all the way down, you know, these turns continue, you can see they can continue acting. And then finally, there's one last war right here at the very end. Uh, and then Mike and Priscilla have 16 and 30 cards 36 cards respectively, which gives us 36, or sorry, 52 cards, which is the number of cards we have in our deck, uh, which means that our code is acting pretty much as expected. And so that case, that is, you know, that's lab 3.3. So uh, this one was more complicated. Uh, thank you guys very much for sticking around. Um, I apologize, I'm not really building this code, but just because it was kind of lengthy, I wanted to give you uh, just an overview of it, keep this video as short as possible. Thank you all very much.